Attorney Ward, what are the implications raised by confrontations with the Department of Children and Family? Uh, the Department of Children and Families in Connecticut does a wide range of things. The areas of their work where lawyers are most involved are firstly in child protection cases in which the Department of Children and Families uh, intervene in family life uh, regarding uh, the perceived welfare or lack of welfare of a child in a home. Uh, there are also licensing and certification matters for uh, foster parents and uh, child care providers uh, that uh, DCF uh, covers and lawyers uh, will get involved in those licensing uh, issues too. I'll address each of those separately. In what are called child protection cases, uh, they begin when the Department of Children and Families get a report from some source uh, regarding the welfare of a child and an investigator is sent out to investigate the source and the reports and who they're from uh, are often not made known. They're, they're privileged. Uh, and an, an investigator will go out and investigate the report and depending upon the level of the report, the level of concern based on the allegation, uh, different procedures might be followed. In, the, in some instances, uh, a DCF investigator will go out and find that the report is not one of real concern and they won't op open a file and they'll note that the report was in their parlance unsubstantiated. Where a report of child neglect or abuse is quote substantiated then further actions will be taken by DCF. DCF has a fairly low level of proof for substantiation of a child protection report and it's basically whether or not there's any evidence at all uh, supporting the claim. So the, uh, most of the time they probably do substantiate reports. Depending upon the level of their concern, they may or may not immediately file uh, anything with a court. In the first instance, they'll try to, if the situation is not of a certain level, they'll try to enter into a voluntary arrangement uh, with the people under investigation and ask them to do certain things and uh, be involved with them over a period of time, several months perhaps, coming out to the home weekly or bi-weekly. Um, and if they're satisfied that the situation is resolved, uh, the matter would end there. In very serious cases, on the other hand, uh, DCF has the right by law to immediately take a child from a home for up to uh, uh, several days uh, before they even have to uh, appear in court to justify taking the child. But that's only where they have evidence that the child is in imminent danger of serious harm. The juvenile courts in Connecticut hear uh, child protection petitions brought by the Department of Children and Families. And uh, one key regarding court proceedings there is that they tend to take a very long time to come to a conclusion. And what happens very early in the case is very important, particularly to the extent that if a child is removed from the home, obviously the parents want to get the child back in the home as soon as they can. Um, and there are procedures to ask for an immediate hearing uh, regarding that if a child has been taken. It, it's a huge difference in such a case as to whether or not the child has, remains in the home or, or, or
does not remain in the home. Uh, people do not have to talk necessarily to DCF. Uh, DCF, when, when DCF investigates somebody, it's not a situation where, like, when the police arrest somebody, they, under the Constitution, advise the people, you have the right to remain silent. Uh, that rule doesn't apply to DCF investigations. They don't tell people you have the right to remain silent, although, in fact, people do. It's always a tough to strategic decision in such cases what level of cooperation a person should or should not give the Department of Children and Families in, in those circumstances. It's a judgment call. If you have a case where you think that you could succeed in working things out with the Department of Children and Families without the intervention of a judge, then cooperation is more likely than warranted. If you have a case where that does not appear to be so and it looks like you're going to have to have a hearing in front of a judge, there's a different consideration. The judge ultimately decides. And there's two basic things that the judge decides. First, whether or not there has been neglect or abuse as alleged. If the judge finds that there hasn't, the case is over and the child uh, DCF is out of the family's life. If the judge finds that there has been, there's a separate question uh, of a dispositional hearing, which is what shall be done now? And since the cases can take so long to come to a final decision from a judge, uh, just because six to nine months earlier, let us say, a judge finds particular conduct was neglectful, if in the interim uh, the causes of that have been addressed, the judge might send a child home uh, with particular conditions. The last important part to know about Department of Children and Family Proceedings is that in cases where that does not happen, where after a year or two a child is still in foster care under the guardianship of the Department of Children and Families, then certainly regarding young children, and in most cases, uh, termination of parental rights petitions will be filed. And that's a separate category that, we, that I'll address separately.